Hey everyone, Chase Ellaby, Joel Williams with Williams Ellaby, and we are going to come to you today with a question that was actually posed by a viewer, so we appreciate y'all chiming in. And the question is, what do you do if the person who actually caused the wreck is trying to deny that they caused the wreck? Mm -hmm. uh, that happens, uh, believe it or not, more often than not. So what, what do you do in those situations? Well, in that, that situation, you gotta prove your case, right? That's right. You gotta prove that what they're trying to sell is incorrect. Um, so a lot of times the first place we look at is with uh, the accident report. After a car wreck, almost every jurisdiction, whether it's a state patrol, a county sheriff's department, or a police department, they're all gonna have an accident report that's generated and it will list out everything that the officer found and their findings from the wreck and mm -hmm. what they believe happened and all that. Sometimes there's witnesses listed, so that's usually the first place we go is to look and see if there are any witness names listed on there that we can call to have them cooperate our, either our client's story or sometimes we call them and they say, oh yeah, your client's wrong, it's the other person's right. Uh, but at least we know. Uh, also, you can go and look at what we call CAD reports in Georgia or see if there's any 911 calls where witnesses called the wreck in and you can identify people who may have seen it that way um, and see what they have to say about it. Um, other things that we, all of this stuff's available through public open records sure. requests, by the way. So you can also go and order the officer's body camera footage or dash cam footage and sometimes it will have the at fault driver saying something at the scene where they admit yeah. fault, but then they learn somebody's bringing a claim against them, and voila, all of a sudden they're saying, oh no, it wasn't my fault when they already said it was and they're on camera saying it. Yeah. Um, other places you can look are nearby stores. If it's in an intersection, sometimes they'll have closed circuit video cameras that will point in the direction of the wreck. And matter of fact, we had one not too long ago uh, where our client had a head injury and she couldn't really remember what happened, but we were able to get the store camera footage and it actually showed that she ran the red light. So we were able to show that to her and she understood at that point that she probably didn't have a case, but any kind of external evidence in the way of documents, reports, video footage or witnesses to prove that what you are saying is correct and what the other driver is saying is incorrect will go a long ways towards trying to get the opposing insurance company to make you a fair offer of settlement. Yeah, and that's right. And kind of to go back on the point you talked about the police report, the police report is definitely not the end all be all because yeah. keep in mind most of the time, 95% of the time, the police officer didn't actually witness anything. So like Joel was saying, it's just a summation of their own investigation, right? I've had situations too where the police report's been completely wrong um, and I've learned that by getting the police officer's own body cam footage to see, you know, for instance, in the one case that sticks out to, in my mind was that the body cam vi uh, video showed exactly what my client had said happened and there was an independent witness that said the exact same thing that my client said happened, but that witness was never listed on the police report and the police report had my client at fault mm -hmm. when the body cam video was the complete opposite. So that was a huge, huge piece of evidence and that was able to you know, sort of turn the tide in that type of case. But it was, you know, to answer this viewer's question, that's exactly what happened. The at fault driver was saying, well, it wasn't me, I wasn't the one at fault. Um, and the police report didn't look good, but getting that video definitely, definitely, you know, made it happen to where we were able to recover, a uh, pretty good recovery for our client in that uh, particular yeah. case. You remember that one we had, it was down in, was it Noonan? Anyway, it was south of Atlanta, and we actually had to try this case, mm -hmm. and it was a pedestrian and a crosswalk. Right. Um, and I can't remember exactly what the issue was, because it's been a few years now, but the defense lawyer thought his star witness was going to be the cop. Right. right, but we had the cops' body cam footage. It was the dash cam. Dash footage. cam. Right. Yeah, you're right. We had the cops' dash cam footage, and apparently the defense lawyer had never looked at it, and he was just going off what was written in the report. He put the cop on the stand, and the cop was just going off of what he put in his report because he couldn't remember. But there was a big issue where the cop said that our client admitted that the hand was was a flashing stop hand or something like that meaning that he didn't have the right of way and so the cop put that in the report but he, the cop said that he actually talked to our client yeah. at the scene and he told him that right we got the dash cam footage from his car and it showed our client being loaded into an ambulance and driven away before as the cop was showing up <laughs> yeah before the cop ever got out of his car right, right? Exactly. so we knew that 
the ju- and the jury did. They completely disregarded what that. All right, because they knew. Said. Right, yeah, the police officer. You know, he probably had good intentions in trying to create the report. Didn't remember exactly what had you know what happened two three years because the report was created you know by two three years before we actually got to trial, and then it was just going off his report and then realizing after the fact that oh wait I didn't even talk to this person and I just testified for the past ten minutes fifteen minutes how I spoke to this person at the scene and this is what they told me so. Yeah, another great example of why the report is definitely not the end-all, be-all. So. Yeah, and probably the reason that case went to trial is because the insurance company was, got the report. And that's all they relied and that's on. that's all they looked at. And they said, it's not our fault, but like Chase said, the report doesn't always tell the whole story. So if the other person's denying it's their fault, there's other places you can look to build your case. Mm-hmm. Um, if the other person continues to deny that it's their fault, at least in Georgia, I'm sure it's this way in other states as well, the insurance company for the at-fault driver can still settle the case without their insurance permission. Correct. Right. Yeah, they can, in some situations where, let's, as an example, let's say it's a red light, green light, mm-hmm. right? We see those a lot where one person says the light was green, another person says, no, my light was green. Well, if the damages to our client or the, you know, one of the drivers are, um, is very, very high, say it's a $100,000 ER bill and there's only $25,000 of coverage, well, a lot of times the insurance company will probably just tender those policy limits, the 25000 in order to protect their insured, even though there could be a question of liability. So it's sort of a risk assessment for the insurance company at that point. Yeah. Um, and sometimes insurance companies will, will settle cases when they know that they're insured at fault, right. even if they're insured denying it. Right. Because uh, you can run into particularly hard-headed people in this world, yeah. believe it or not. Yeah, that's exactly right. And kind of to that vein, you sort of uh, get that out of them when you have to go and file the lawsuit, right? Mm-hmm. So, Yeah, if they don't settle it, they don't settle. Right. then your next option is file the lawsuit. Uh, right. And, in that, and honestly, in cases where fault is, where the other side is denying fault, you're almost always having to file a lawsuit and you're always having to do discovery. And typically, by the time you're taking, or by the time you've taken depositions and talked to the at fault driver, you can usually get some good admissions to sort of tilt the scales in your favor as far as who was at fault and who wasn't at fault. Yeah. But again, that's just you know another consideration because it's going to take more time, more effort, and more money. Yeah. But the truth almost always comes out because once one lie is told, then other lies get built on top of it. Or if a guess is made and that guess is incorrect, mm-hmm. then it just compounds on itself. So lots of times by the time we get to trial and somebody's, if our opponent is telling an incorrect story, then it's going to be shining like a bright light at trial. And sometimes that can actually be helpful to our clients. Oh, yeah. Because I think some of the hardest cases to try are the ones where the, we just can't agree on the numbers, okay. but the defendant comes in at trial and says, I'm so sorry, this was yeah, my, fault. my fault, I, I accept 100% fault for causing this wreck, I wish it wouldn't happen, I'm so sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it kind of takes the sting out of it from a jury's perspective. But if you're in there denying fault for a wreck that's clearly your fault, then you're not going to get any empathy from the jury. No, you're going to make them mad. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to make them mad and they're going to think you're wasting their time because I've tried cases like that where it's clear that the other person's at fault, but for whatever reason, they're just being stubborn or think something bad's going to happen if they just fall on the sword and the jury gets mad and gives more money than you would get otherwise mm-hmm. because they're just being completely unreasonable and yep. not sympathetic. That's so. right. And that can happen sometimes too where they do admit fault um, and you're just you're having a disagreement over, over causation, like in other words, whether the wreck caused the injuries that you're claiming it caused, um, or what should be awarded for the injuries. Sometimes that's the only thing disputed. But um, in those cases where the at fault driver claims that the wreck's not their fault, get an attorney. Yeah, like, sooner rather than later too. Because, yeah. And for, mostly for the reasons that Joel discussed early on about just having to get that evidence. Because quite frankly, we've, I've, you know, talked to plenty of folks who've been involved in a car wreck where it's he said, she said, but there's no witnesses, no way for me to get any video, no way for me to find out from any independent source that this was, you know, one person or the other person's fault. And in that situation, we can't do anything for them, especially in a a state like Georgia, where if it's 50-50, nobody wins, everyone takes their ball and goes home. So the sooner the better, for sure, in the case where they're denying liability. Yeah, and and we're not saying that to try to get you to hire us, Mm -hmm. because you, 
like I don't care if you don't hire us, just hire a good right, personal someone. injury attorney that's in your state or in your jurisdiction to handle the case when the other person's saying it's not their fault because there's a lot of other things that have to go into proving the case because you have to remember that the person that's bringing the claim, the injured party, has the burden of proof. Like you can't just go in there and, I mean, I guess you could, but it's right. probably not gonna go well on a he said, she said situation. So you always have to try to dig in and find that evidence to push you over the edge. It's like those scales of justice that you see, it's got to tilt in your favor because if they're evenly balanced, you lose. Right. right? You got to find some evidence to tilt it, um, even if it's just a little bit. But attorneys, good attorneys know where to look. Uh, good attorneys know where to dig. They know how to present that evidence to, to show that it's not your fault or that it's mostly the other person's fault because maybe you have a little bit of fault. Right. But you may still be able to recover depending on your own state's laws. So if the other person, I guess the, to sum it all up, if the other person is, is denying that the wreck is their fault, you got to go out and do the legwork, do the uh, interviews, call witnesses, find the evidence to show that it was their fault and it's not just your word against theirs. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, hopefully that's been helpful to you. Thank you again for the question. Uh, if the video has been helpful, give us a thumbs up. Um, hit that subscribe button. And otherwise, we will see you next week for one more exhilarating video. That's right.